Okay. Ready? Yeah, almost. Let me just All right. that in there. All right, I think we got it. Okay. Awesome. I Rumba. All right. All right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I am here with Richard Ryan, and we're here to talk about his film, Art of Deception. Richard, man, you were awesome in this movie. I w w loved the whole story, all the Thank little you. twists and turns. It's just, this was a film, that, this is like one of these indie action films I absolutely love because it was, it felt original, like, so, like, with everything that goes on in the film. And, dude, you were just awesome in it, like, both in the acting and the uh, action department. Like, great job. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I really do. So my first question is, how did you come up with the idea for this film? Where did it all start? So I wrote a treatment years ago, uh, like probably a few years before we started the film. And um, we, we began pre-production in uh, 2013, actually. And um, I just came off of my latest film before that, Natural Demise. And then before that was Fortune 500 Man. And then I, uh, networking and just getting the ball rolling and auditioning and did a couple other short films as well. And um, it was about that time to start to, to make another movie. And around that time is when I met Jackie Nova and uh, she's um, lead actress and producer of the film. She's a force to be reckoned with, uh, quadruple threat, you know, seeings. Uh, dances, action, um, has the chops, you know, even comedy and all that stuff. And uh, she was a huge inspiration and, and um, the value that I bring to the table as well. And we, uh, we were talking one night uh, with our, with our, uh, with our toesies in the water. <laughs> one, one hot summer night in, in um, Los Angeles by the pool and we're like hey let's let's make a movie because uh we're, we're always focused on growing and evolving and um i, I want to act as much as possible and i began making movies uh not only for um to play different characters that i know i can play and um because i i enjoy doing it i love doing it but also so i can build opportunities so we figure it'll be a good way to um, write some characters for ourselves so we can we can do another film and create opportunities and, and go through the process and make a movie. And uh, and and so we decided to green light the project Art of Deception and it was based off again a treatment that I did a few years previous and then we started um, going through the process. That's awesome. And I got to tell you, man, I, I, the cast in this was great. Aside from you and Jackie, Leon Von Wass, who plays Roland, he he was that over the top, like he played it over the top at times, but that's okay because I think it was perfectly fit for this type of movie because he's like the power hungry type who's, you know, he wants to control the government somehow with the help of the vice president, you know, who we later learn is, is like kind of shady himself. Sure. But I like how everything played out. Um, how did you find Leon and where, you know, how, what's his, um, where'd you come up, where'd you have Leon in, involved with this? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you liked, uh, Leon and, and, and he, he brought another like a, aggressive, um, eccentric, um, character to the table, which, which it really, it really worked. Um, because once you're in that power hungry position and it's your opportunity to overthrow, like there's a lot of variables involved and. You don't get a lot of sleep and your mission is so clear where you just get you're aggressive with it and um it was great like just i would say i don't know around like 2011 uh we i reached out to him through through facebook and i just really liked his 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 style his grit his um 
his artistry. He, he paints. He, um, I've seen him do a lot of monologues and it, it just seems like his mentality is really, um, a true artist. And, and I just thought like, Hey, he and I would play op well opposite with each other because we have similarities and we also have in, um, differences as well. Right. So we, uh, when we decided to, um, to green light the project, I thought, Hey, this will be an opportunity to reach out to Leon who lives in Amsterdam and to, uh, give him the role of, uh, the deputy direct director of the CIA. And, and I researched in, in this, the CIA cannot be for, um, from a foreign country, but the, a deputy director of the CIA and given like uh, the circumstances of the script, there's some science involved. So he, he would be a good fit for the deputy director of the science and uh, technology department. And in great story um, from his standpoint, because he never, ever um traveled outside of amsterdam over there and um he never flew or anything so it was a huge leap of faith on his part and and yeah he, he'll tell you like even his family was just like hey did, did you research jackie and richard like you, you don't want to be put yours uh in, in a in a jeopardized situation you're going to a foreign country people that you that you never met but his dream was to always um, play in in a in 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 the Hollywood movie, and um, he he took the leap of faith and and he came out here, and um, around that time we just completed the script, and uh, we were, I was, breaking down the schedule, breaking down the budget, and uh, securing the locations, and um. And uh, Jackie and I picked him up from the airport when he flew in. And it was just like, there he is. And, and, and we met, we talked, we, we had sushi. And, uh, and it, was, it, was, it was such a, a great thing because he, to, he took a leap of faith. He believed in myself and Jackie. And um, I was able to create an opportunity for somebody who had, um, or, um, or Jackie and I were able to create an opportunity for somebody whose dream it was to always make a movie in in in, in America in, in in Los Angeles, and uh, is very fulfilling, and and he had the opportunity to come up to uh, my family's my family's homes in Northern California, and took vacations with us, and. And uh, we, we were living together for a while. And it was cool because I got this real um, uh, we were able to grow this relationship and um, as a friendship as well. And I think it enhanced the chemistry that we had on set and uh, that he, he was over here and like when Jackie and I were picking up the equipment and uh, um, going through the process of, of location scouting and Leon, Leon, Leon and I would go into the locations ahead of time for a, a part of our prep and really talk through the scene and, and get where he is mentally and, and just really where, where he needed to be. And it was just, it was awesome. That's like, amazing. Yeah, the, the whole that, process of that. That's amazing. You got to have this actor coming out from nowhere, from Amsterdam, to live his dream. I mean, and he did an impeccable job. And who knows, this could be a stepping stone for him to do more Hollywood films down the road. Because I would love to see more of him in these type of movies eventually. Yeah, certainly. He, he's a really good character, uh, actor, and he's a good actor in, in general. And he actually... Um, from the result of our deception, he was able to to springboard that and and uh, and and be in some more films over here as well. And and now he's in Spain and he's traveling a lot more. So the whole world opened up, and that's pretty cool to be a part of that uh, for him as well as so many others. Because since 
the beginning of me making films right out of high school about 16 years ago um just i would start with the process of securing the locations the schedule the budget and uh researching what equipment we needed and um going to the equipment rental place and learning that process of the technical aspects and renting it out and and uh, along so doing that just accumulating the people who i've met through acting class um put out ads on craigslist uh la casting for actors and crew and, and actors access um throughout the years That's and awesome. uh, and and the people that obviously need to come together to make the the project happen and uh they did you know um i i called upon them and even before i had no budget at all everybody showed up on time um ready to work every day there's never been an issue with somebody not showing up and um i always had that conviction and that passion of like hey this is what we're doing um the preparation was there the organization was there so so people saw that they they want to be a part of this and um i was wearing all the hats running around on like no budget before it became more of like the trendy thing to do right and, and people recognized something in me and 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 they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to put their time, their energy, their passion, their commitment, um, their their skills into the belief of of my what my vision was. And but they did. And so I take a lot of honor in that. So it's more it's above me. Uh it, it's more than just me pursuing a career it's every single person that has been involved in any of my productions one way or another um i'm doing it for them as well because i want them to sh i truly want them to say hey i was in a richard ryan film and have it mean something so they can benefit from their um, in their career in in one way or another and provide for their family and friends and they can open more doors up for more people as well and just uh yeah just That's keep and that's, that's a very cool. fulfilling thing that's about cool. the journey, to share that with one another, you know? Exactly. That's it's total inspiring. Exactly. I think that's total dedication. I mean, you, right. I could say, let's safely say you're one of the most dedicated filmmakers out there because it, it's like you go above and beyond to give everyone a chance. And you prove, you just proven that just with everything you said. And one I thing I absolutely it. loved about this movie was the action scenes. It's, I loved the little sparring fight between you and Jackie up until your oh, yeah. your little riffs of you know fighting here and there. What I understand you you may have a you have a background. What's your background in martial arts? Where did you where did that all begin? Yeah, so in college actually I started doing some jujitsu and kempo and and uh, and then some. I, I did it throughout the years, um, pretty inconsistent in my opinion. I did some boxing as well and throughout the years, but it wasn't until like the last like two or three years where I really uh, wanted to be more consistent with it. So, um, and uh, because I really enjoy it and it's a skill set that can be um, used in, in, on, on camera and it'll just be one more, uh, tool that I can bring to the table that I can do. So it'll make me more valuable for, for, uh, whatever roles that calls for it. But also it's a beautiful mind, body and, and soul experience just, uh, in there learning these, these moves, these combinations and sharing just this rigorous training period with other individuals who, are uh wanting to make improvements as well and you're in there it's it's grueling it's tough it's um you're in these circumstances but you have to it, it's mental so you're able to just breathe and you can apply that to just focus focus on your breath and, and just in life too you know there could just be 
um, an immense amount of things that have that goes on. Your your car breaks down, a, a certain bill, something, this and that, this family member, whatever the situation is, and it could be very old. It could be overwhelming at times, but just remember just to focus on your breath and just slow things down, and then just just one step after another and and it's just really how you react uh to situations that really make that that moment in in the day the the month the years and martial arts is really good for that because um it it's a lot of it it's like picking your spots and and how you react and don't fall for the fakes and focus in in uh on what's important and uh and it's good for memorization too, right? You're learning all the combos and it's, um, yeah, it's a great sense of camaraderie. And just like in the, the movie industry itself is a great sense of camaraderie because it's tough, it's challenging. Um, but you, you, you see familiar faces over and over. And, and during that time of, you might not hang out with people all the time in the business, but once you do, it's like, there's an overwhelming sensation to share um, like success stories because it's, it is very challenging overall the business and, and, and the, the connectivity is, is genuine and it's uplifting and there's a certain commonality of like, Hey, we're, we've been through some things like we have an understanding and, and, uh, and we're still here and seeing people, that I've started with over the years and, and seeing where their course in the journey um, goes. It's uh, it's an awesome, just very like blissful thing. And it just keeps you going. And it's, there's all walks of life, right? All backgrounds, right. All, <clears throat> uh, all trades um, that income. And so you got real military accountants, uh, production designers, construction workers, yeah. directors, producers, just all under one umbrella sharing this camaraderie and understanding. And it's very militant also, right? Uh, of like, we're going to achieve these shots. We're going to go through the process of production design, the, the hair, the wardrobe, the lighting, making sure people are fed and taken care of and, and safety. Just under the umbrella of this mission of, making a cinematic uh, a movie or a television show or it's a beautiful thing it's a great experience so for the fight scenes here um i understand daniel jew was the fight choreographer did you have a hand in any of the core did you help him out with the choreography at all like what you want did you put any input into the choreography as well or did you put your faith in daniel completely yeah I, i'm i'm always in I'm, I'm always involved in every step of the process and um, I've known Daniel, uh, when I first moved, first moved down here, he worked on my first feature film, fortune 500 man. And so, um, even during that time, like I would bring him on to, to choreograph different fight scenes. Um, so it, it would be a collaboration. There would be some fight scenes where, where, where he did and, and I followed suit, uh, there would be other fight scenes too, where I had a, a vision ahead of time that I said, I want this fight choreography to go this way. And, and, um, and then he, he would um, sprinkle in a little thing, a couple little things as well. So it, it was a good collaborative effort. Uh, and then also like vice versa, if he had fight scenes that he uh, choreographed and maybe I might add a couple little things here and there. And, and since he and I have known for each, knowing each other for a long time, um, worked on probably about four films at this point mm -hmm. and uh, the chemistry is there and um, there's an understanding. So the workflow is great there. That's amazing. And, and the way he, te the, the way he, he goes through the process of um, he, he's a really good, uh, he, he knows how to coach as well and, and get people to, to effortlessly understand the choreography because he, he, he's also um, a high school football coach and he's played semi-pro football as well too. So just just like um, the, the trainers that I've had, 
like uh, Ricky Keelis with boxing, uh, four-time title belt holder, or, or Dan Mayed at Mayed Martial Arts with, with the Kempo and and uh, Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai, Judo, Kung Fu's over there. So I'm implementing that into a lot of the fight scenes. But but these these real good people that – because not everybody who, who, who gets it who, who, who does it is a good teacher to, right. to be able to provide that, that knowledge to be able to uh, teach the choreography and teach in a, in a very like effortless way that, that you could retain it. Just breaking down the, the choreography in a way that could be understood. And he does it really well. And it's always, uh, um, it's always a good time working with Daniel Jew. And Natural Demise, he was even my assistant director and, and one of the lead actors in Natural Demise, my second. Oh, nice. Film was, was it a horror film as well? So <laughs> he, he was a big, that was like a 12 day shoot. So he and I um, really came together on that one as well, too. So yeah, he's a great guy. How long did this one take? And were there any issues that you faced during production on this one? For, okay, so for our for Art of Deception, um, so we did the pre-production and the planning of where we want to shoot and breaking down the script, the budget. And, and uh, so because it was only myself and Jackie producing it and, and we had a limited budget, <clears throat> I wanted to focus on planning two to three weeks specifically for a weekend of shooting. Mm -hmm. and then we shot that weekend and then I would go in and edit and then um and then we would shoot and then after I edited that weekend we would go two to three weeks of planning period we would shoot during the weekend and then edit and then we re repeated that process for two years and then we had the principal photography completed and then we we went in to pick up shots, reshoots and pick up shots and then did some more editing along the way. And then uh, we had a refund raise for 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 post production and um, maxed out credit cards, savings. Wow. Uber, DoorDash for 16 to 20 hour days. So um and uh, during for, for to accumulate funds for we did a couple of Indiegogo campaigns um, to accumulate the funds for uh, uh, post production the rest of post production right you got mm -hmm. the sound the visual effects the color and um, there was um, one particular instance that was uh, that that was challenging. But it was, it was what helped was um, sort of a mindset that I've always had, and which you always, which you do have to have, um, which is visualization and commitment to a plan. And um, I remember I visualized a particular scene for about five years. Uh, even a couple years before we shot the film, um, this this scene that uh, that I wanted to shoot in South Lake Tahoe because I'm from Northern California in Sacramento, so South Lake Tahoe I always go up there because um, it was an hour away and we have a timeshare up there, my family and I, and uh, it's always been uh, my my sanctuary to go up there. It's beautiful, South Lake Tahoe. So I wanted to shoot the film uh, the film up there, some scenes. And um, I visualized the, the dream sequence because I love creating dream sequences because yeah. it's to really get into the mental state of of the character and you're able to take that dream anywhere and it can be out of context of um, a lot of the story but it has to make sense in a way but like it's a dream so you could take any direction you want so I know I wanted to shoot it in the snow so but. So I've been going up to Northern California my, or Tahoe my whole entire life. Without clockwork, it would be snow every year around, around winter. So during production, it just so had it 
be where there was like no snow up there for three winters straight or it was extremely little. So I'm like, well, shoot, I, I we need to finish this movie. I had this dream sequence that I've been imagining for years. I've even scouted out the locations ahead of time before where I wanted this huge meadow of, of fluffy snow and, and bright sun. And then, um, and then it transitioned to like very mystical and, and dreary and, and wet and rainy. So we didn't have that because there's no snow coming down. So we went to a green screen. So I rented out a facility where we shot a 25 hour day. We just jam packed so much into the scene. Right. But a lot of it was like, it was my first time using fake snow, using green screen. We shot other scenes as well. Um, but this, so, so we shot it and it didn't look the way I wanted. I wanted it to look. It was my learning experience with fake snow and green screen and all that stuff. Um, we, um, so, but the next winter in 2017, there was a huge amount of snow. It dumped. So there was 28. So there was probably like, and, and I didn't even check the weather forecast at this point, which I should have, yeah. but there was 25 straight days that it snowed. So it was completely fluffy. It was January in 2017. So I was like, okay, we're going up there, right? So we planned uh, in a, day, uh, a weekend of shooting. We shot two days in, 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 in LA. Then we drove up with my um, uh, the budget truck, the other cars that of that transported like probably 10 of us up to uh, up to my hometown first where, where, um, where we shot in Cameron Park in El Dorado Hills of Sacramento. But then we went up to Tahoe and then there was one day that was completely just picturesque, just beautiful sunshine. It felt like 80 degrees out there. So we shot the scene out there and like eight of us just hiked out there in the middle of the meadow. And, um, and, and we went out there and it was just a beautiful sunny day. And um, just as I imagined, and we were getting the shots and I was in a suit and uh, Jackie was in the wedding dress and it was this very suspenseful, thriller-ish, beautiful scene. And, but that was the day to do it of all days. And, and it was sort of meant to be because I didn't even check the, the weather forecast. But then we found out the next day, the storm was coming in. So it lined up perfectly, the power visualization that, that it played out like that. But then the storm was coming in the next day. So we had to get out there for the second day of shooting. And then, but, but like there was a turning point of the scene where the mood completely changed and it was supposed to be dreary and windy and, 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 and dark and cloudy, which we got that for real. So during the scene, and then so during the scene, it would be picturesque, it's beautiful, this and that. Then all of a sudden, a point happened. I don't want to give a big spoiler alert what right. happened. So then all of a sudden, boom, the, the wind was blowing. It was dark, it was dreary, this and that. And then we cut to the other location, which after we wrapped up during that location, we had to drive about 45 minutes around the bend of Tahoe as, this, as a huge storm was coming in. So some of the crew was like, Hey, are, are we going to still shoot? I'm like, absolutely. We're going to shoot. This is exactly how I imagined it. So we got around, we got out there. There was a huge, like, like, um, on the lake, there was on, on, on the dock, there was this thick, like icy snow on the dock, which was, was a blessing. I didn't imagine that, yeah. but it, it looked so good. And then we had the establishing shot on the on the on the uh, w w on a, a tripod. Then all of a sudden, the 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 wind and and, and the, the the mist and the rain started coming in. It was dark, so we had twenty shots to do. So we were we would run and gun it. We, we had the the guy uh, our camera operator on handheld, 
and then we would do two to three takes per shot that I wanted to do. And after every sh after every shot, I had my shot list in my pocket, and I would pull it out and say, "Okay, we got to do this shot. We got to do this shot." Then we got everything like an hour and a half, but. <laughs> And then all the crew was like right there. Was, and th that's the beautiful thing about the indie world, right? You got yep. eight, eight of us right there, passionate, committed, free, like cold, got the jackets on, got the umbrella. But it was so fulfilling and so amazing because we're, we're in this mission together in the trenches. And we got the shots that we needed. And uh, the next day we celebrated with like eating pizza and stuff and um up there down there on the strip yeah. in tahoe but like but it, it turned out and, and then and then soon and then we edited it and then i put the music in there and i worked very closely with uh our um, a composer simone cilio who lives in italy and um we collaborated and the scene turned out wonderful pretty much exactly how i imagined it five years later so um that was uh, an example of a challenge, but working through it, not getting discouraged yeah. that there's no sunshine and, and, um, or, or like not, not getting discouraged that there's no snow or being discouraged with anything. Pretty much you got to just roll with the punches and, and just really never stop believing in, in truly visualizing um, the end result and working towards it and believing it all the time and it, it'll come together. So, so um, that was a challenge. And then uh, post-production was, um, what was, was a, a, a big challenge at times too, and running out of funds, but again, um, just putting those extra hours and doing it, everything that it takes to, to get the job done, like working, 20 hour days after 16 hour days on set, you know, then it comes time to like, you got to now raise more money and then just adjust any little like um, things that didn't go well on production, like with the audio or, or yeah. th things that you need with the visual effects. Now it's time to really face that head on and no way around it. And, and so there's a lot of technicality, that, that I had to learn in, in accumulative knowledge or a knowledge that I had to accumulate. And I didn't even know about going into it, but I was faced with a lot of dilemmas and with the great team around me and support of, of Jackie, of course, and, and, and family and friends and just people on the project, like Patrick Girardi, he uh, did wonders uh, with post-production sound and really teaching me a lot. And then, uh, saying, Hey, you know, you sometimes you got to get in there, do 16 to 20 hour Uber days. And that's what I was doing for a couple of years as we were in post-production in the trenches, um, with art deception. But like I said, like taking it back to, it's more than me, right? It's everybody who yeah. showed up on time, ready to go and was involved in one way or, uh, one way or another and wanting to see this ship succeed. Like there's just no other option to quit. Like, you got to figure it out. And, and with this day and age, especially more than ever with so much information and so many people that are willing to collaborate and, and build something wonderful, like there, the, that exists. So there's no reason not to just show up and, and just keep going, putting in that work and living your dream and it will come true. There you go. That's, that's exactly how, Exactly. That's exactly what our this you know the the film is. I mean, it's just it's a pat. It seems like it was a passion project. You overcame every obstacle imaginable, <clears throat> and it here it is. The movie's out, and you know here and great again. Great job on this movie, and you I appreciate know. that. Yeah, and and I wanted to uh, tell another story too. Um, another challenge that. Um, so we were shooting downtown. There was another day in Los Angeles. We were shooting downtown, and uh, and there, during the, the the torture scenes, and then we wrapped up there, and then we took the drive to another location, and it was the location where uh, Leon Van Wass's character 
uh, Roland Smith was in his office and it was a beautiful office. Like I had wood grain. I, and we, 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 we set dressed at the office. Uh, we picked up props from universal studios. Um, we would, we would go in there and just Jackie and I would rent the, uh, the props from universal studios after we went to McNulty Nielsen, which is the um, equipment rental place that I've been renting equipment from for like 16 years. We went over to division camera, picked up the rental. So we would do this every day before the, the weekend of shooting. But um, anyway, we, we locked down this particular location um, for the deputy, de deputy director's uh, office. Right. And there, there was a window right behind where Roland Smith was, 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 uh, was sitting in the, the, it was on the second story. And, and so a lot of the scenes were, were for all the scenes actually were for day. So, so it would, we would shoot the scenes, but we were a little bit behind schedule. So it would probably be about seven thirty PM. Lunch will come around. We, we still needed, we were going overtime We're we're still, we needed to do like two or three scenes. So I'm like, Oh shoot, you know, there goes our light because now it's completely dark. So, um, I had no idea that, that there was a crane, um, downstairs and, and I just think I, just in case I actually rented a, a one K mm -hmm. which is a powerful light to simulate. I think it was a five K actually is a powerful light to simulate some sunlight in case you need it. Mm -hmm. But again, we were on the second story. Right. So, but so it was lunchtime. We were all eating like 10 of us on the crew and the cast. And uh, usually a crane it costs very, a lot, like there is very expensive to rent. So it's kind of like a joke, like, oh, we can just, you know, take a crane and this and that. And so we're joking around and or, or we're, we're standing around talking around and our uh, cinematographer from uh, from um, who, who, who who is from India originally, Vishal Solanki, he, mm -hmm. he's wonderful. And and he says that I was just like, wouldn't that be great if we can just get a crane and and pop the fire? And but he's. He said, yeah, there is a crane. I thought he was joking around, but he was serious. He's like, no, there's a crane downstairs. So the fact that he brought that to my attention, that's why it's important to get professional people around you who actually care about the project, who, yeah. who are aware of the variables, um, the, the gifts that we have to have to complete the project. And he recognized that there was a person with the crane downstairs. So I went downstairs, I wrote him a check for a hundred dollars. And then he, he lifted his crane up to the second story. And then we shot the 5k in through the window. So we had daytime the whole, the whole night. And then wow. we actually ended up doing one of the scenes. We actually ended up doing one of the scenes at nighttime. Um, or like it was supposed to be during the day, but we changed it to night and it worked out really good. So, and, um, so just circumstances like that, just kind of, um, just being aware and rolling with the punches and, and just always working through challenges and situations and having a good professional tight knit crew that, and cast that you, that you trust and, and you care about. And, uh, everybody has a good attitude and sense of gratitude, like anything can be worked through. And, and complete yeah. the project. Yeah, it, yeah, I think for me, it seems like with all this, you got you got blessings in disguises throughout this throughout shooting the movie. You know, yeah, from the weather to the crane, you just got you just got one blessing after another. It's like someone was looking looking down and you saying, "Yeah, you're getting this movie done one way or another." That's yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's true, it's true. And, and I've always had that sense of sense of feeling because like I've I've been creating and, and building teams and and creating games and and since like with other people or myself since like seven years old, I've always been like, Hey, we're doing this. 
and it's just going to happen. I just trust the process and the flow that it is going to happen. And even on my second short film, um, there was a scene that we were shooting at UCLA because at the beginning, uh, like what, when, first started making films i i rent i i went to google i googled who's the the the, the right place to to uh, rent equipment from and i went over to ucla film department and, and found some some crew over there and some actors over there to help me out because they have equipment and knowledge because they go to ucla or again if i go on craigslist and find some people and we actually shot a scene um this, a second film called quest and we were shooting in the back there in the the comms the uh, the the uh, place where you uh, the commissary, and we shot a scene. And then later on, after we shot that scene, like two hours later, we would need to go over to um, um, another location, which is right by the four hundred five, right across the street from the Getty. Mm -hmm. So our scene would be like. Like I, I would be walking up the hill, having a conversation, a metaphor conversation of how I'm going to go down to Hollywood and pursue my dream and this and that. I'm like, see the top of that mountain. I'm going to climb to the top of that mountain, just like I'm going to climb to the top of Hollywood. And that was my second short film. And I got up to the top of the mountain and, and, and like, it was this very like, like heroic moment, right? Quest, check it out. But, okay. but while we were shooting the, that previous scene the dp's just like oh man you, you look at all those clouds over there it's gonna rain like the cloud it was just like completely dark like you would like you would put your whole life savings on the line that it was going to rain because that's how much it looked like it was gonna rain and then uh i was just like no it's not gonna rain it's gonna be perfect it's gonna be great it's gonna be wonderful it's gonna be fantastic we're gonna get up there it's not gonna rain we're gonna shoot and sure enough we went over there. It didn't rain. It's like a, a, like a hole in the sky just opened up for us. <laughs> and there was like clouds all around. But then there was a, this big old like sunshine just opened up. And, and we had a low angle shot, this heroic moment of me on top of the mountain, like succeeding. And, and, and that's what it was. You know, that that's yeah. what happened. So again, it's that sense of belief, that visualization, the like, I just, you can dictate your, your reality and go for it. And so, uh, so that was cool. And then, uh, yeah, like, um, heck I had to under, like really learn the workflow of, of, of post-production in art of deception mm -hmm. and, um, with sound visual effects, color grading. Cause I didn't have, there was no like post-production supervisor or right. um, it was like, so I had to figure all this out and, um, and, and I had to put ad on ads on Craigslist actually. And upon like looking for visual effects artists, which is very expensive um, here a lot of the times and uh, just like everything else in Los Angeles, um, I had to uh, look outside of, like I found my composer, very good composer, Simone Cilio. He has like 200 credits. He's won a lot of awards. And um, he, he was passionate about working on, on a, a film in America. So he was able to reduce his price and he's a hard worker. And I found other artists uh, from, from Egypt, from India, from uh, Pakistan uh, to do the visual effects. So just having this like this back and forth workflow um, through Zoom a lot of the times, and I'm able to connect with all these amazing people from overseas that I never met in person, but but we know each other through the work and the love of of, of cinema. It's it was it's it's been it's it's a it's a platform to bring us together to not only create work but also to connect and inspire each other and build a friendship and with modern day technology that we're able to 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 do that uh, um and and have it be an international uh the movie industry be more international than ever 
and true truly collaborate with anybody in the world it just opens up a whole new world of possibilities and just brings a lot of hope and inspiration of anything's achievable that's phenomenal and oh, i think people need to check out art of deception so where can they see it right now if they were to check out this movie right now where can you see art of deception art of deception can be seen on um tubi on um, amazon prime and a bunch of other various platforms but uh if you want to check out all of my films and uh oxfilms.us o x f i l m s dot u s and you can go on there and you can, you can see the trailers and see links to my movies my other films and then um yeah where can my, they follow you? and where can they and where can they follow you on or on social media where can people find you yeah you can find me on richard ryan seven or art of deception the movie ox films entertainment also have a a Twitter, I think, called Ox Films Ent, and uh, TikTok, Ox Films Entertainment, and Facebook, Richard Ryan. But yeah, I'm gonna um, put everything on on oxfilms.us, so you could enjoy yourself while watching the films. And I'll make sure that goes in our description on this uh, on this video. And thank you so much again, Richard, for talking about Art of Deception. I had a great yeah. chat. It was a great movie, and I can't wait to see more from you. Yeah, it was a pleasure. And then also check out, uh, follow our um, lead actress and uh, uh, producer and um, partner in crime, Jackie Nova, at Jackie Nova 7. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm really appreciative to, to be a part of the film industry and doing what I love every single day and, and, and living my dream. And yeah. – uh, and the, I, I would recommend to just go for it. Live your truth. Um, um, carry yourself with good attitude, gratitude. Um, eat healthy. Exercise. Get the endorphins going. Treat yourself well. And uh, lead by example. And um, if you have an idea, put it down on paper and go through the process. Write a book. Write a song. Make a movie. Um, you, you can just learn anything like martial arts, guitar, basketball, baseball. Um, it's biology, you know, it's, it, but it starts with our idea. We have, we have an idea and, and, and we just, the more we do something, biology, our, our, our body will follow suit and our mind will follow suit as well. And, and you'll just, um, fly and soar like, I, I produced, direct, wrote, acted in most of my films, edited all of them, 17 short films, three feature films. I go to American Film Market where, where I, six years ago where I found out the, the marketing and distribution side of things, which I highly recommend if you're in the film industry to, ch to be really engulfed in the marketing and distribution side of things and the business side of things. That will enhance your – that will allow you to do make more art and then uh, as an artist, and, and if you're in the business side of it, um, get more involved in the creative aspects of it because the, there's just more sense of an understanding of how the whole operation works. And it gives respect to every single person on set and, and offset from the business side and the creative side of it. And uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm doing my fourth feature film right now. It's called Remington. I'm in development stages of it, so feel free to um, email me. I have a contact page on my website. If you're a cast or a crew, uh, we're gonna start pre-production in, in two to month, two months. And um, yeah, we're at beginning. I, I want to make Fight Club two. So Brad Pitt and David Fincher, let's let's get going on that. <laughs> awesome. that, that'd be the ultimate dream right <laughs> I'm yeah, 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 yeah. And, and i got an mma movie i'm in development with too right now so uh conor mcgregor let's train together we'll love uh would love um for you to be part of that and i, I know he just did roadhouse with jake yeah. Hall, which is incredible i mean look jake Hall. he started out at, as an actor he still is an actor but yeah. look at how he, all that he's able to do he's able to yep to train with professional fighters and have, it's just, 
it, it's an amazing uh, industry that you can learn so much and you have the opportunity to work with so many great individuals and, and learn from them. But, uh, but at the end of the day, you just got to go for it every single day. Just give yourself pats on the back. You know, I know we, we, we recognize huge victories for ourselves, but well, you'll get there. But the important thing is too, like I said, good attitude, gratitude, but also recognizing the, 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 the small victories of um, outside looking in might seem insignificant, but, but you make your bed in the morning, you, you eat something, you, you, you make a commitment to do something and you do it, you work out, you this and that, you might not see the results the way you ultimately want to see the results, but you can see, but if you take it back and, and you realize like it's those small victories every single day, every moment builds the morale and you're just, you're just victory, 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 victory. It's, it's a perception of how you look at things. Um, a lot of the times too, just look on the bright side and then just really be engulfed in the moment and, and, uh, and, and focus on that and enjoy the process, be in love with the process and everything will work out organically. There you go. That's, that's, that's a good way to cap this off. Well, thank you again, Richard, for taking the time to talk about our deception and we'll definitely have your, we'll promote your website down on our description here and everyone you all stay awesome and you have all have a great day. Thank you very much. Watch the movie, our deception and Killian Murphy. Congratulations. <laughs> it's all, all right. the Oscar winners. Emma Stone. Oh man. Amazing. <laughs> Chris, Christopher Nolan, all you, you you're all an inspiration. Keep keep uh keep doing big things so we can feel the inspiration and good vibes. Well everyone, y'all stay awesome and you have a great day. Thank you very much. All right. Well, Richard, I got something to tell you. Huh. My kids and I recognize you from a couple of videos from Darman. Oh. <laughs> the one we love the most is the one where you and you play Chaz Laughlin's brother. And when he changed the will and you like yeah. that felt like a really serious like video because the way you presented yourself to Chaz, like you were like you were like, you were better than like half the actors in the, the yeah, yeah. videos because you oh, brought out like, this real dramatic performance. So that's like awesome. Oh, wow. Man. You know what? I, I really appreciate you acknowledging that because like sometimes, I mean, it's very tough, uh, challenging to get jobs, right, as an actor. And there's so much that you do just to be able to get the opportunity to, to work on set. And um, like that – opportunity that I got it seemed that it was amazing and it's there was something about that shoot where, where the director and and uh, the, the production team made it feel more cinematic like it was a jump in the production value and in the story um it was kind of cool to be able to, to be called upon that particular Darman project because it I was researching Darman himself and it sort of emulated it seems like it emulated him a little bit so be able so um for, for for them to call upon me to do that and be a part of that it's amazing and and i got in there did my job and uh, productions and projects they take a a, a work um they they they, they take a, a course of their own and a lot yeah. of times you don't know but uh but the fact that that um that that your son acknowledged that that I was in that Dar man um, was super cool. It's very inspiring, and and that you're able to now we're able to have this like full circle moment, and and uh, like have that conversation with your son. Like, hey, I'm interviewing Richard Ryan. Have that mean something? It's yeah, very inspiring and it's uplifting, and it gives me a uh, gives me a lot of like good positive vibes to keep going, which I appreciate that very much. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad to have talked to you about Art of Deception. And yes, everyone needs to check it out. So everyone check out Art of Deception and check out Richard's website, oxfilms.us, to see his other films. And again, can't wait to see what's next from you. So once Thank again, you. Thank you so much. 
stay awesome and uh, y'all have a great day. Bye now. Thank you. I appreciate you.